In this work here, we're going to see how we can run multiple YOLO models in parallel. So we're going to talk about thread safe inference with the YOLO models, so basically just how you can use threads together with the models. You can both use the same model, you can also use multiple models where you basically just start a thread with each of the models to run inference on. Could be that you have multiple cameras, could be that you want to do some batch processing and so on as well. Maybe you just want to be able to control individual cameras based on the threads. It's a very good way to do it. It's also good just to have everything running parallel instead of basically just having it step by step or like one by one sequentially on the CPU. It's still going to be scheduled in sequential on the CPU if you're running that, but on GPU we can run it significantly faster if you use threading and basically just optimize it for running in parallel with the Autolytics models. So let's just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. If you go inside the guides tab at the top, we can go down to the third one here, YOLO thread safe inference. We pretty much have videos and all that covering all the guides here, but definitely go through it in details. This is just guides, tips and tricks on pretty much just how to build better computer vision projects. And this one here is for speed optimization and also just handling updatation, segmentation models and all that multiple cameras in larger projects. So first of all, we need to understand what is Python threading, how does it work and what is the benefit of it as well. So for example here, when we have a single threaded process, we execute one request after another and then we basically just wait until the first one has completed. This is not using any asynchronous mode or anything, we just execute one request, we wait, we execute the next request and then we pretty much just do that in a sequential fashion. When we use multi-threading as well, we can actually just create more instances, more processes of the same stuff. So let's say that we have three cameras, then we can create three yellow models as well, or basically just have a model for each of the threads. This is the exact same thing as starting up like three new programs. Of course, it doesn't have all the, all the hardware, it doesn't have the file system and all that, but you can actually just have your threads. So it's just a process that we send out there and all of them will be able to work in parallel. So here we can see a multi-threaded process. We schedule here, we have the CPU processing time on the x-axis. On GPU, it can work in parallel, but the CPU here is still running sequentially, but we can schedule it faster, it can run faster, so the context switching, swapping instances in and out, because if you have one model running here, one camera running here, we want to load it in, wait for the next process, there's a lot of context switching, which is also very good for multi-threaded processing. So here we have multi-threads, we send all the requests in as more like a batch, or we have them work in individual processes, then we can have a request 153 here for a single threaded uh, process with async IO. So here it's basically just running in asynchronous mode. This is very important if your cameras are independent of each other. We don't want to an analyze like two streams at the same time, or basically just want to process them in parallel, combine the results after. Then this asynchronous like single threaded process is very powerful. It's much faster, especially if you use GPUs and so on as well, and it makes it easier to handle your camera streams, your projects, and so on. There's different ways that we can actually go and use it. So you can have one model instance if you, for example, are not using threading or basically just a non-thread safe example, as we can see here. So we import thread from threading, and then we also import the YOLO model. We create a shared model. Then we can actually have a single instance model that we just run through each individual thread. But the problem is, as we saw up here, we actually schedule them the different requests in parallel, so they execute in parallel as well. So you might be able to run into some problems if you have just a single model that tries to share across multiple threads, because you have multiple threads competing for the single resource that you have. You only have one model, and everyone is competing to get that model resource the exact same way as CPU, GPU resources, and all that. So this is an example of how you can do that. So you have the image path with the prediction, you call your share model that predict image path, but this model here might actually be used by another thread while it's running. So you can see here, what basically just reads it, it's important to recognize patterns that can lead to concurrency issues. Here, what you should avoid, sharing a single YOLO model instance across multiple threads. It's pretty much the same as if you are printing something. Let's say that you want to print something on your printer, and then someone else comes in, also wants to print something on your printer, and then basically like you come out, we have an A4 page with two different prints. 
that's kind of like what's happening here as well. Then we can have multiple model instances. So this is a way more safe approach, but it's still a non for safe example where we have share model one and also share model two. And then we just feed that into arguments when we start up a new thread. And again, the threads are just running in parallel to each other. Then we have thread safe in inference. This is very important. Again, you need to understand how threading works. It's very powerful when you build computer vision systems and so on. And this is a more thread safe example. So definitely go for these ones. If you have multiple cameras, you want to create multiple instances of your models. Maybe you want to do completely different processing or analysis for different use cases. So then you have one thread doing one use case, another thread doing another use case, and so on. So let's not jump straight into our code editor. I will open up a terminal, I have these examples here that are going to run through. So I'm just going to have two images that's going to run in parallel or basically in each individual thread. So example one here is unsafe with a single model. This is just the exact same examples as inside the documentation. But now we'll just run through it. We will start the threads here. So this is just going to print the results that we're doing inference with on the shared model. So let's try to run the script. Python thread inference.py. It's going to take care of all the model downloads, even the image examples here that we have, and then it will run the outputs. So first of all here, let's go and take a look at the results. This is one output. Let's see where we got the other output. We got an error here. So we can actually see that we got an exception here in our thread two when we're trying to run it with our shared model. We've got an attribute here, something somewhere in our layers with PyTorch, probably because it's just competing for uh, the resource. We got the results here for the second example that we throw through it, but it's probably just because the other one, it didn't finish the process first. So this is, don't use this very, make one make very clear, don't use this. You can create an instance for each of them, it's a bit safer, but again, it's significantly better to use the thread locking in here. Shared model, this is just a second example. It's gonna do the exact same thing just with two, uh, two shared images. This could work, but it's still not a safe approach. Now we're gonna do safe with threading. So let's grab this example. There we go. Now we're going to have our local model. This will have more resource constraints and so on to your system compared to having the global model and then having the thread locking with also Linux, but it really depends on your use cases, applications and so on. Could even be that you have multiple models that you want to run inside your thread, do different types of analysis and so on, where it makes sense to basically just have it inside the thread, but also not, not, not share the resources. So it's gonna be faster when you have it inside each one. Thread safe prediction. Let's try to run that and let's see what we get out of the, the results. First of all, let's make sure that we clear the output. Let me see what's going on. We will run, downloading the models, downloading the weights and all that. Here we see we got the outputs. Got the outputs from both of them. So now we can see no errors. We got the output. They're not competing for the resources. It's basically just getting scheduled on the CPU um, better because it's just going to be in parallel one by one but they're not sharing any resources we don't have the printer example or anything so this is very strong let's comment this out again let's go to the last example here where we use the thread locking with autolytics just to see that this act like works we're not getting any errors and we can just clear it let's make sure we clear it there we go and we rerun it again it's pretty fast we don't get any errors. We will never run into errors when we use this thread locking because we lock the resources. So that's the hardware for now. And we can access the same model at the same time. So it needs to finish the process, needs to finish the request, then it can start the new one. But we, again, we're still launching up thread so it's significantly faster doing the context switching. So when the first request is done, we're, we're instant there, instant ready with the next request where we don't run it like in code and sequential, do a lot of processing and all that. Could even be that you want to do some processing, analyze your results after it does, done the processing, then you can have one thread running in the background, doing all the processing, then you can have another thread or a main thread 
doing the analysis on top of your outputs from the detection threads that you're running. And you can do this for multiple cameras if you have a full scale system and so on, multiple different models and so on. So it's very important to use threading in computer vision, just be familiar with it. So make sure you understand it, go through the video again, go through the documentation so you fully understand why this is important because it's very important. Hope you learned time this video here. Hope you guys want the upcoming videos. Until then, happy threading.